Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Oak Ridge Wesleyan Church. It's so good to see you this morning. It has been just picture perfect weather this weekend. I sure hope that you have had a chance to go out and experience it. I know that for uh, myself yesterday, if you haven't been, I'm just going to do a little plug. If you haven't been to the Largo Central Park Nature Preserve, um, I took a friend's advice and went and checked it out yesterday. They have a whole field. They, it's their first year ever having a whole um, field of wildflowers. Some of them were as, to as tall as me that had reached the height, uh, my height. It was incredible. So if you were looking for something to do after church or maybe you want to eat lunch near there or something, I would check it out sooner than later. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it just reminds me about, you know, that passage about not having to worry Consider the wildflowers, how God clothes them in beauty and takes care of them, right? God takes care of us, and he is so good to do that. And that was, is just a reminder to just sit there and just take in the beauty of the wildflowers and be reminded how much more God takes care and knows you and loves you. So that's just a little plug from Pastor Christia this morning. Well, I want to welcome you officially. Welcome to worship. If you um, are here, you're a regular tender. If you're a guest with us, um, we want to direct your attention to the blue cards in the seat in front of you. Those are a way that you can connect with us. And um, RSVP for things. You can sign up for the prayer chain using those. You can, you can do all sorts of things with those, including introducing yourselves, asking for prayer requests. Um, and um, if you're interested in being baptized this evening, you can do that. But honestly, I would prefer come chat with me after service today. Um, you can fill that out anytime at, during service and after service. You can hand those to me, myself, um, to P Pastor P PJ, Pastor PJ. To PJ, Pastor John, or the, <laughs> yeah, what, what's his name? No, just <laughs> I love you, honey. Um, <laughs> the plates in the back of the uh, sanctuary and the plates at the door. Um, as you leave, you can leave them in there as well. Um, we have a few uh, announcements that we want to share with you this morning. Um, a reminder to our leadership board, they are amazing. Uh, we are meeting tomorrow night at our home at 630 um, another thing we want to let our church family know is that the memorial service for Linda Bowman will be held this Tuesday, um, April 16th, at Garden Sanctuary Funeral Home. And that's in Seminole. The address is 7950 131st Street North. Um, viewing will be 3 to 4, and the service will be held at 415. So if you have any questions about that, um, I have that address. If you didn't get it now and you would like it after service, please come and see me. Um, and it's also been sent out on the prayer chain as well. Um, if you um, have the opportunity to come out tonight and enjoy God's creation um, at the beach, we are all going to, well, maybe not all, but we encourage all to come out and enjoy a time of fellowship tonight at Sand Key State Park. Um, that is at 5 p.m. Parking there is a great, huge beach with guaranteed parking. It's $5 per car to park there all day long. So if you want to go sooner than 5, you can go sooner than 5. But at 5 o'clock, we'll be gathering there. And, um, and you can bring a picnic dinner. You can um, eat before you come, however you want to do that. And we, at this time, have three people that we will be baptizing this evening. And so we want to celebrate together. We want to um, just worship God together just through that act. And this is going to be a fantastic time this evening. So we hope that you'll come out and join us. Um, again, 5 p.m. Sankey State Park. If you are interested in being baptized, you've had God work in your life over this past Easter. And, and maybe you were kind of like not sure where you were at with the Lord, but you cemented your faith and you took that step and you want to follow through with the act of being baptized tonight, please, please, please let us know. It would be our great pleasure and a great joy to be able to do that this evening. So please talk to us. We have our tickets for the Clearwater Threshers Oak, Oak Ridge Night at the Ballpark. I have them in hand. We have a few um, to be sold. That's just in a couple weeks, so make sure that you get your tickets from me and your wristbands. That is on April 26th. That's the game. There's a concert afterwards, and all you can eat food for two and a half hours. So fast all day, and then come to the ball game. <laughs> Uh, we also have our kids and teens are going to camp um, this summer. 
And we're, yes, we, we have a good group and uh, super excited about that. There are a list of things that we are doing to try and help raise some funds for our kids and teens that are going. Uh, we have flyers out in the meet and greet for Little Caesars Pizza Kits. That's one way that they're raising funny, e <laughs> funny, R raising money for uh, <laughs> camp. Um, $6 per kit and code sold goes towards them. Um, all donations for the coffee bar during this month will go towards the teens. They're going to be serving us um, during our celebration service and local church conference on Sunday, May 5th. They're going to do a work night and clean up some of the church grounds on Wednesday, May 1st. And if you would like to help and support them and all these things, and maybe it, you want to get a kit and you can donate t online. You can fill out check, cash, however you want to do it. Just make sure you label it Youth Camp when you give over the next couple weeks. Because camp is so early, we're going to be wrapping up fundraising about mid-May. So there's a few weeks, not a ton of time, but there's a few weeks to contribute if you're able to. Okay. I think that's it. <laughs> I hope. Check this out. Make sure you stay connected with this. Check us out online. And I'm going to invite you to stand up with us as the worship team comes forward and we um, go ahead and just commit this time to the Lord and continue in our worship through prayer, song, and listening to his word. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity that we have to gather in your name today. God, we thank you for this gorgeous weather that we've been having. God, you are good and you are the creator of all good things. God, help us to be mindful of the beauty that is in every day. It doesn't have to be grand. It, it can be the little things that draw our attention to you. God, help us to remember to pause and to thank you for those things, to see the good. In a world where sometimes we're drugged down and there's, man, there's distractions everywhere and there's sometimes there's discouragement, there's lies of the enemy and there's things going in our world that are so far from you. God, we need those reminders and we need to be mindful of what you put in our lives that are beautiful and good and true and that direct our attention to you. And, and right now, I am thankful for your church family, for the church body that is represented here at Oak Ridge. It's such a beautiful church, such beautiful people, your reminders of your creation. You've created each and every single one of these people that are here today in your image. God, you, you love each of us and you've called us to be your sons and your daughters. You've made a way through Jesus for that to happen. We are so thankful this morning. God, we are so thankful that you are with us here, that you sent your Holy Spirit to be with us, not just with us, but within us who believe and have chosen to follow you. Thank you for that gift, the beautiful and powerful refreshing gift of your Holy Spirit. And today we ask for more of you. We ask that we would fall more in love with you, that our relationship with you would deepen because we came into this place today, because we encouraged someone in their walk today, because we listened and obeyed and took steps of faith today. God, I ask for more of you in my life and more of you to fill the lives of my friends this, here, this morning here today so that we can be empowered through your strength, so that we can be refreshed in spirit, so that we can be filled with the joy and the hope that you give us in order that we may reach those in our lives and throughout our, our city and throughout our country and throughout the world for Jesus Christ because you are the reason for all good things. You are the reason for our salvation. You are the reason for our hope and for the new life that we have because of you. And we praise you for it all. We thank you. You are such a good father to us. May all that we do in the next hour, throughout the, the whole day, throughout this week, be pleasing and honoring to you and draw people closer to you because they have encountered you in us. And it's in your name I pray. Amen.
yesterday, today, and forever in everything that we go through. God, you are a God who is with us and who is present. You are the same God that was faithful to Jacob through every generation. You're the same God who called Moses and speaks to us. You're the same God who worked miracles in Mary's life, the same God that gave courage to David. God, today we just ask, we invite that your Holy Spirit's presence would be with us and that you would draw our attention towards Jesus. We ask for your strength, your peace, your power, your presence to be with us. We need you today, Jesus. Church, we want to remind you as we continue in worship today, you're welcome to come forward if you would like as we continue in worship. The altars are really always open during our service, but particularly during this song, we just invite you if you'd like to worship not just with your voice, but also with your body and just to draw near to the Lord. And, and maybe it's a joy or maybe it's a burden that's on your mind or your spirit today and you just want to come near to God with your body and say, Lord, I need you in my life, in my situation, and what's going on, and recognize that you are that same God today that you've always been. And all these stories that I read about in scripture, they were just, they were people, they were average people like me whose lives are intersected by a holy God. And, and today, God, I feel kind of average with what I'm going through, but I need a holy God to intersect my life. And so we just invite you as we prepare for a time of, of corporate prayer to draw near to the Lord as we continue and sing this morning.
Pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful team of musicians. And Lord, we do need you every minute, every hour. And Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful sanctuary we get to meet in every Sunday. Lord, you've blessed us beyond all measure. Lord, we just, we want to give more and more because you gave so much. And Lord, as we come to that time of year we call Pentecost, and we're celebrating uh, your son's resurrection. And Lord, he didn't leave us without something. He left the Holy Spirit to come and dwell within us. Lord, we just pray today as we we hear the wonderful sermon that our pastors prepared from Acts chapter 2. Lord, give us a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, there is now therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not in the flesh but by the Spirit. Lord, help us to be strong. We see the end is coming. We see the culture changing. We see a country that used to be so God-fearing. Now it's not popular. And Lord, we just pray that uh, you'll help us Christians. Lord, we want to be we want to be powerful witnesses. Jesus said, go and preach the gospel. Lord, we, we see our neighbors. Help us, Lord, to go up to them and they say, how come you're so happy? The world's in such bad shape. And we can look at them and smile and say, Jesus is coming, and I'm so happy to be saved today. Lord, help us to teach our teenagers and our children in their summer's camp that Jesus is coming. And we know the gospel, and that's, that's where we get our hope and our joy and our peace. And the Lord, the world needs us, Lord, to be testimonies. Lord, when we go to Walmart or Kmart or Bucky's or Wow Wow, they say, how come you're smiling? And we're going to tell them that's because we got Jesus, that powerful name. Every knee shall bow. Lord, we thank you for our missionaries out there just the hard working and going after it. Give them the power and the funds to do their job. Bless them, Lord. Keep them safe. Lord, we got a wonderful praise today. Jadine is on the men. She's looking up. Thank you, Lord, for her healing. Lord, we pray, especially for Carolyn Chambers, who has a little issue with the AFib. Strengthen her, Lord, if be thy will. And Lord, we come to that occasion where we miss Linda Bowman already. Lord, give him a wonderful celebration of life. Bless her family. Lord, we miss Buddy. Now we miss Linda. God, we're going to get to see him again in heaven. Give us that peace. Lord, we pray for the baptism tonight. Lord, this is what it's all about. Jesus said, confess me before men, and I will confess you before my Father. And we just pray for those candidates tonight, Lord. God, it's going to be wonderful. 
in the camp from the teenagers. Lord, bless them real good. May they see the scriptures and the word and the excitement of being a Christian. Lord, we just pray this all in Jesus' name, that powerful name, in the name of Jesus. Amen.
your presence and in our midst, and we are just there face to face with you, Jesus. And today, even in this moment, we have the opportunity to sing, to shout, to participate in the hymn of heaven. The kingdom is coming, but Jesus also declared, it has now come. My presence that is transforming you from what you were into all that I created you to be. And so, Father God, I ask that even today would be a moment, a glimmer of heaven breaking into our souls as you draw near to us. May we draw near to you. Father, I ask that you would speak this morning. As we look into your word, help us to hear what you want us to hear. As we worship you this morning in the giving of tithes and offerings, we recognize that you are the God who provides. That everything we have, even the breath in our lungs, is from you. And so we worship you as we return to you that which you have asked of us. And God, we pray that you would bless the funds that are given this morning, that they would be used to further your kingdom. And God, we pray a blessing over those who give this morning. We ask that everything today would be saturated with your Holy Spirit, that you would not allow us to leave the same way we walked in, but that you would help us to encounter you to hear your voice. Because more than we need songs, more than we need a worship service, more than we need a, a preacher talking to us, we need the presence of God. And for that purpose, we've drawn here this morning. Because Lord, we need you. And so we just open up our spirit and ask that you would speak to us today. In Jesus' name. Congregation, you may be seated if you are not already, and we want to remind you again of the opportunity to give in tithes and offerings. There's plates available at the back of the sanctuary as well as out in this meet and greet area when you exit a little bit later. Uh, you can also make sure that you place any blue cards, blue connect cards that you have in there at that time. And if you would like to give online, there's a number of ways that you can do that that are listed at oakridgewc.com slash give. And at this time, we want to go ahead and any of our kids and volunteers who are part of Adventure Kids, we want to dismiss you. Morning. How you doing today? Good. I heard a loud, one loud good at least. Hopefully the rest of you by the time we get to the end of this will sense the Holy Spirit, not me, speaking something into your lives and you will feel good as well. We, we started a, a new series last week at Oak Ridge called Refresh. And it's my belief and my desire to see God do something fresh here in our midst at Oak Ridge Wesleyan Church. We are invited by Jesus to draw near to God the Father and to ask and wait for what God wants to do in our lives, that namely sending of the promised gift of his Holy Spirit to empower us for the mission that Jesus had always intended for his people. If you have a Bible this morning, it might be a papery one, it might be a digitally one like this, but I'd invite you to get your Bible out, and if you would lift it up nice and high this morning and say, I got my Bible, PJ. We are going to be continuing through the book of Acts once again, so go ahead and turn to Acts chapter 2 if you would. Do you remember the first time, or excuse me, the last time actually, that you had to wait for something that you were excited about? You were looking forward to something and, and you were thinking in your mind, this is going to be really good. I've just kind of got to wait for it. Like maybe you remember a TV show or a movie series or a book series and, and you had been kind of with the franchise for a while and you had gotten to the point where the author or the writer was done and yet you knew that there was another installment coming. And so you're, you're waiting with anticipation, counting down the, the, the days till the 
the release date. Or, or maybe you have a favorite season. Maybe you really look forward to spring and those, those flowers beginning to pop like Pastor Castilla was talking about earlier. It's that first warm day of summer or the first cool, crisp day of fall or the first snowfall of winter. Although if you look forward to the first snowfall of winter, you're probably not present here in the sanctuary. You might be joining us online this morning. Maybe you remember your spouse cooking dinner somewhere in the kitchen and you were working somewhere else in the house and you smelled those smells and it was like, oh, this is going to be good. I just can't wait for it to get here. Or maybe you remember booking a vacation or a trip and you're looking up pictures of things online, where you're going to go and all the things you'll be able to experience and just watching as the second hand at work goes, waiting to be able to go. I know for me, one of the things that always I get excited and it's, it's kind of hard when I'm waiting is when I order something online and then I have to wait for it to arrive at my house. And probably the worst thing I've ever purchased that, that just kind of made me antsy and excited and everything all at the same time was a couple of years ago, we had the opportunity to buy uh, e-bikes or electronic bikes or pedal assist or whatever term you want to use. And we were really excited to purchase them. They, they weren't very inexpensive, but we were really excited for the opportunity that they were going to bring us. And I remember we'd researched different brands and we picked out the one we wanted and we went online and we paid what seemed like way too much money. And And immediately, we get the notification that the money has left our account. And that's about it. (laughs) And I remember that they had told us it's going to be like 12 to 16 weeks before they actually arrive. And so I I knew that going in. But it was like the moment I purchased it, the money was gone. And I remember like every day, I'm like at the website, are there any updates? Like, is the factory building this thing over in China or wherever it's built? And and every day I'm there wondering and wondering and wondering and like months go by and suddenly I get the email. Your bikes have shipped. And if I was on the website like every day before, I was on the website like every hour at that point, like why can't they put a GPS tracker on my package? Finally, they arrived and I was super excited for that moment. The disciples in the opening chapters of Acts are in this waiting pattern, waiting on the Lord. Jesus had been with them and he had completed the work that he had come to do, his his life, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension. And Jesus, the, the guy that had bodily walked around as God in human flesh for like the last 30 years with them, the last three and a half years or so, He'd gone back in heaven. And he said, the Father has something good for you. In fact, during his time on earth, he said, this is going to be better than when I'm physically walking around. God wants to do something in the sending of his Holy Spirit in your life. And we read in Acts chapter 2, the moment when the Holy Spirit arrives. It says this, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Stop. Who, who's they and, and what is this one place? If we back up a little bit into chapter 1, it says that there's about 120 disciples, followers of Jesus, that were gathering together as part of the early church. And the number 120 is kind of significant, actually, because if you go back in Jewish tradition, according to the rabbinic teaching of the, the, the oral teaching of the rabbis at that time, that was later recorded as what we call the Mishnah, They would say 120 is the base number for like a group of people that could be considered a city or maybe a legitimate group within Jewish culture. And so there's 120 people and they're gathered together in one place. We're told they met together in an upper room, although we're not told exactly what that upper room was, whether this was the same upper room where they had the Last Supper, whether this is some wealthy person who's followed Jesus and they're allowing them to be there. Now, 120 is a pretty big group, so it's a pretty big room. It had to be something about like this size, right, to fit that. And it could have been uh, a, a room in the, the temple walls, in the temple courts. We know a little bit later that the disciples kept meeting there. But we know this, according to Acts 2, verse 1, that when the day of Pentecost came, they were together in one place. And suddenly a sound, 
like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the house where they were sitting. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. And they were staying in Jerusalem at that time, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one of them heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all of these guys who are talking Galileans? How then can each one of us hear them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? But some made fun of them and said, they've had too much to drink. This story recounts for us the moment when the Holy Spirit comes and breathes fresh breath and fresh fire into this group of people. Something that sounds like the blowing of a violent wind and looks like tongues of fire that rest upon this group that is here. And for us, this morning at Oak Ridge, what I hope you're desiring in your life and what I hope that you're desiring for our church is a movement of the Holy Spirit in your individual lives and in our corporate lives. A desire to say, I believe in who Jesus was. I believe he really lived, really died, really rose and really ascended to heaven. But that that's not enough. That God wants to do something beyond that in your life. That Jesus doesn't just say, just look to me. Just look to me as something external and what I can do for you. Because quite frankly, the work I came to bodily do, it is finished work. And I have gone back to the Father and it's your job to partner with me to see the kingdom of God move. what we sang about a few minutes ago. How I long for heaven. That doesn't mean I sit here in a comfortable blue chair and wait for it to get here. It means right now, God, come in power. Help me to see not just the kingdom that is coming, but the kingdom that has now come. Because of the work of Jesus, you offer your Holy Spirit, I need you every hour. I need you. I want you now. Come in power now in this church, in this community. Now I need to see you. Here I am. Use me and fill me. Let's look at what happens in this story when the Holy Spirit comes and talk for just a few minutes about what that would look like, about what that would be like if the Holy Spirit were to come in our lives. And the first thing that I would notice saying, how does the Holy Spirit come into our lives? How does the Holy Spirit come into our church? Is to say that the Holy Spirit comes with prayer. If we backed up into chapter 1, verse 14, it tells us what this group of 120 people is doing. It says they joined together constantly in prayer. This was a group of devoted prayer warriors waiting on the Lord to fulfill His promise, sending the Holy Spirit by drawing near to God's presence in prayer. Prayer is not telling God something He doesn't already know. And it's not trying to convince God to do something He doesn't want to do. (laughs) Right? Sometimes we have these misperceptions of prayer or these these ideas about prayer. And prayer isn't like we we say to God, Hey, God, I wanted to to let you know what's going on in my life. And he's looking down like, Are you serious? I had no idea. 
nor is consistent and constant regular prayer about motivating God to do something he doesn't want to do. Hey God, can you do this? Hey God, can you do this? Hey God, can you do this? No, no, fine. If it will shut you up, I'll answer your prayers. Prayer really, and the consistency of prayer, is about us being the ones who are conformed and transformed to what God has already decided He wants to do and who He is. It's like God is in one shape and position and He doesn't change. He's the same God. And, and we keep trying to kind of come into relationship with God and saying, I want you to do what I want you to do. And God's saying, you're not fitting with me right now. That's why you're not seeing it. And we keep coming and keep knocking. But suddenly as we keep coming, all of a sudden we become changed in our orientation. We conform our lives more to what He looks like. And as we draw near to Him, we conform to what He already wanted to do and what His will was for us. For these first Christians, it was a way of recognizing some of their, first, their smallness and God's bigness. It was a way of recognizing their utter dependence on Him. It was a way of saying, God is God in heaven, and He has a mission for this earth, and He just did His part, life, death, resurrection, ascension. And He wants me to pick up the rest. I feel pretty small and pretty dependent on Him. Do you want to see the Holy Spirit in your life? Do you want more than merely saying, I've prayed a prayer and I bought fire insurance so that I can go to the good place later on? But I actually long to see the power of God flowing in and through my life. I want a real and a genuine relationship where I abide in Him and He in me. I want to see my community and my family and my church transformed. I want to see the miracles of God happening. Do you really want what the Holy Spirit says you can have? Are you praying in a way that allows you to be changed? Not just, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. But help me see you. Help me really know you. Help me to wait on you until you have conformed and changed and transformed me and you know that I am ready to receive what you have already determined is what you want. To give me. There was a power that caused Jesus to rise from the dead after the Roman execution. A dead guy rose. And that power, that same power that brought Jesus back from the grave, was available to these disciples. They had watched Rome hang Jesus on a cross. And they knew that same fate could await them. They were desperate for a power that was bigger than themselves. They were desperate for this Holy Spirit that comes with prayer and comes with purpose. Acts 2 tells us that the coming of the Holy Spirit was on the day of Pentecost. And Pentecost is, literally means 50th day. It is 50 days after Passover. And for Jews in the first century, they were celebrating what would have been called the Festival of Weeks. It was the festival of remembering the wheat harvest. And it had also come to be associated with the giving of God's law to Moses on Mount Sinai. And every Jewish male, no matter where they lived in the world, was required to make a trip to Jerusalem during the festival of weeks. And that's why this passage tells us that all of these people are gathered from all of these nations that some of you are like, I'm glad you pronounce that. I don't want to be doing that. They're all there and they're all gathered together to celebrate God's provision and the way that we relate back to God, the harvest and the law. 
what God gives to me and how I relate back to him. And everything is about to change. Everything about what we've known, everything about the old covenant that God had given and said, if you follow my law, you will receive blessing has changed. And Jesus has said, I've torn open the temple curtain. The presence of God resides with humanity. Everything that is going to happen now is different. The way that God provides for you is through the power of his presence that lives within you. The way that you relate back to God is the Holy Spirit who lives within you. It's not about the law that led to sin and death. It is about the spirit that I give that leads to freedom and leads to life. We don't always catch how awesome and how wonderful the power and presence of the Holy Spirit is. For many of us as Christians, we still say things like, wouldn't it be really cool if I could just see Jesus physically in front of me? And Jesus says, no. There's something even greater in the Holy Spirit. One way I like to think about it is, is a little bit like learning a, a new language. I know how to access uh, translation tools online, and, and sometimes I, I, in my role with the district, I will meet with people who, uh, they speak Creole or they speak Spanish. And, and when I meet with them, I, I'm very grateful that I have places I can go, like Google Translate, and I'll put a whole email in there and try to get it. Or, or sometimes I, I will speak to groups of people, and they speak either Creole or they speak Spanish, and, and I will get to share what I want to share and then there'll be a translator who will translate everything into their language. And it's a beautiful and it's a powerful way to communicate. But how much more could I communicate? How much better and clearer could I communicate with those groups of people if the language was actually something that was within me? If I actually knew their language, I would be able to communicate so much more clearly. And the illustration is so powerful that this is exactly what God does for his people right off the bat. As he enables these disciples who are gathered together, who he has said, I'm going to empower you to, to share your Jesus story with the entire world. He empowers them right off the bat to share the Jesus story with the entire world that is gathered here in Jerusalem. Everything changes when God resides in us and is not merely accessible to us. If you rewind again into to the, the first chapter of Acts, you see the disciples trying to make a decision. Judas has betrayed Jesus. He's hung himself. He's not a part of the group anymore. And they're saying, we need to find somebody to replace Judas. And so the, the law had given them the ability that they could cast lots to try to determine what God's will is. And so they throw dice to see who should, be, who should replace Judas. And Matthias is chosen. And it's the last place in the New Testament that lots are ever cast. Because if you want to know God's will, he gives you his Holy Spirit within you. The coming of the Spirit comes with prayer, it comes with purpose, and it comes with passion. When the Holy Spirit comes in your life, you know it. Verses 2 and 3 say that when the Holy Spirit came, it was like a violent wind, and it appeared as something that seemed to be like tongues of fire. Which means we don't know if there was actually literal wind or literal fire, but the people who were sitting there were saying to themselves, we don't know how to describe this event. It sounds to us something like rushing of wind in the household. It looks like whatever's happening, we have some kind of a vision of something happening, and it, it looks like tongues of fire that are coming to rest upon God's people gathered here. And these are very powerful symbols for the Jewish people. Wind and fire. Wind commonly symbolized life. The, the breath of life. All the way back in Genesis, you have God forming a pile of dust and breathing the breath of life into it. Jews would have been familiar with Ezekiel's story, one of the craziest stories of the Old Testament. He, he sees a valley of bones. <laughs> and God says to Ezekiel, can the bones live? And if I'm Ezekiel, I'm going, uh-uh, they dead. 
But God, he says, only you know, God. And God says, prophesy to the four winds. And winds come from everywhere around the valley, blowing over the bones, and they stand up. And then like sinew and skin comes on them. And then they receive the breath of life. And then they're an army on fire for God. What? And God was doing it here in the upper realm. Taking the ashes of their life, the the dust that was there, the uncertainty and the confusion and the chaos, forming it together and breathing life. Everything they thought they wanted the kingdom of God to be, to put them in power, everything they thought they wanted a Messiah to do for them didn't happen and they felt like a group that was just dead and kind of lost until the Spirit began to blow over their lives and pick them up together. There's something about the coming of the Holy Spirit that comes in passion that comes in a way that you feel it, that you know it, that you are changed and transformed by it. Acts says, it sounded like a rushing wind. We live in Florida. We know what the sound and the feeling of rushing, violent wind sounds like. It leaves things changed and transformed. And when the Holy Spirit comes in your life, you don't just sit in a chair and put on a nice shirt and say, God, it's good. (laughs) But your life is radically transformed. It is blown apart. You are something different because the very power of God has come and made something completely different of what your life was. The Holy Spirit comes with prayer and purpose and passion and power. If wind symbolized a giving of life, fire symbolized God's power for His people first century Jews, they would have been aware of these moments, their stories that they had shared, how God spoke to Moses and called him in a burning bush, how God led his people out of slavery in Egypt by a pillar of fire at night, how Elijah stood on a mountain and all of these prophets of the false gods could not get their God to answer their prayers, but Elijah, he he tilted the scale so far against God, it's not funny, and God showed up with power and with fire. Here in Acts 2, when that fire falls on these first disciples, they are immediately enabled to do what Jesus told them they would do. They begin to witness and to talk to people about everything that they had experienced. The streets at Pentecost would have been packed People from every nation packing out the city. Residents from all of these countries as far away as Rome. And yet each one of them hears these disciples sharing the message of Jesus in their own language. What a dramatic display of God's miraculous power. And one that I think has less to do with the people hearing it and more to do with the people sharing it. I think God was trying to say something to the first people who were the ones wondering, how am I now speaking a language I've never learned before? And people are hearing it that way. And Jesus is trying to help them understand that the power of the Holy Spirit will enable them to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth, and near here, hard and far places that I will send you. It's like a coach. If a coach goes to a team that's been losing for a long time and they're accustomed to losing and it hasn't been going well, the coach knows that they're not going to come and in year one win the championship for their team. And so they go and they begin to assess the players and they begin to build a relationship with them and their first goal is to say, I want these guys or these girls to begin to feel what it looks like to win. I'm going to find what the victory in their life is. The victories in their personal life, the victories in how they play the game, so that as they begin to have small wins, they begin to believe, I can do this. 
I can win the next victory. I won this small one for me personally. I won this one with my group. My team won a game against somebody we probably should have beat. My team won a game against somebody maybe we shouldn't have beat. My team won a road game against somebody we should have been decimated by. We can win. And Jesus is trying to show these disciples the mission that I gave you. The thing that seems daunting and seems scary and seems bigger than you. You will do when my Holy Spirit comes upon you. I will empower you with my Holy Spirit and you will be my witnesses in places that are near, here, that are hard, in places that are far. When you don't know what to say, when you don't know the right language, I can even teach you, I can even empower you to share a language you've never learned. It probably won't always work that way for us. But it can. And it has. And I think what God is wanting to say is, you will move in my power. I have this kingdom that I want you to build. And it's not your power. It's not your strength. It's mine working in you. And as you continue to wait on me, and as you continue to receive my power in your life, I will enable you to be my witnesses everywhere you go, with everyone you meet. And you will find yourself having conversations where you go, I never would have even thought of that. I don't know why I shared that. I don't know why I did that. I just trusted that maybe God had something he wanted to say to this person. And God somehow moved in their life and drew them closer to him. The Holy Spirit comes with prayer, purpose, passion, power, and perplexity. The people who watched what was going on with these first Christians were perplexed. They didn't quite get it. Apparently several of them started to to mock and to tease this group saying, these guys have got to be drunk. They just look crazy. Watching these first Christians being filled with the Holy Spirit didn't quite make sense. They looked different, strange, weird. If you're really following Jesus, chances are you're going to find that time where somebody looks at your life and goes, you look a little weird. In fact, if you've been a believer for a long time and you've never had anybody come up to you and look at the joy that you have and the way that you face life and the way that you embrace difficulty and hardships and seasons of life that seem to crush the rest of the world and you've never had anybody say, are you on something? might need to check how in line with the Holy Spirit you are. But there's something about us that's different. Because the life that I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God. I'm not who I was. I have been transformed just as Jesus came back from the grave. I am somebody different. And the rest of the world looks and goes, I don't quite get it. There's something weird about you, something different. The biblical word is holy. You just kind of seem set apart from the rest of the world. Sometimes being weird is a good thing, and rather than trying to run from it or hide from it or make sure that nobody else really thinks you are different or weird, maybe it's something to embrace. And to say, God, how do you want to use my life? How can I look different in a way that points back to you? Not just weird for weird sake, but weird for your sake. Different in a way that others say, I want to know about this power that is at work in your life. The coming of the Holy Spirit was one of the most dramatic stories in all of Scripture. God was breathing a fresh breath of life into this group of people. And he was coming with fresh fire to say, I want you to have my power to build my kingdom. I'm empowering you to be my witnesses. This Holy Spirit comes with prayer and purpose, passion, power, and perplexity. 
and I want him. I, I want him in my life. I want him in your life. And I want him in this church. And I hope that you do too. I hope that Sundays aren't just a habit. I hope that the gathering place isn't just nice and comfortable. I mean, we work hard. We want it to be a, a good worship service and an experience that engages your heart. But, but I want so much more than that for it to be more. I want you to encounter the Holy Spirit here when we're together. I want us to draw near to the Lord in prayer and I want to encourage you in your life not just to sign your name on the contract and say, yeah, I believe the things about Jesus. But like we started this year off with, that you would be invited to step into the more of God. A God who, who came, who, who lived, who, who died, who, who rose again, and who ascended into heaven. That you might look at your life, your life, that you would look at your life differently than you have. And that you wouldn't just believe all of the lies that Satan has tried to get you to believe and accuse you of who you are and what you cannot do. But that you would say there's a God in heaven. He created everything. He desperately loves me so much so that Jesus would do all that he did for me. And that God is real. And He is refreshing my world. He is making it new again. His idea at creation, it's His idea for eternity. I want to see Him make everything new. I want Him in my life to breathe a fresh breath of the Holy Spirit. I want the power of God to fall in fire on my life and on my church, and to start here, building something. Can you not see it? I am doing a new thing. But only if you believe in me. And only when you stop listening to Satan's lies, and you look at yourself, and you say, it's not about what Jesus can do for me but I believe in everything he has done and it's about what I can do empowered with the presence of his Holy Spirit to be a part of his kingdom to be a witness of his kingdom everywhere I go and so God here I am conform me to you. It's not about what I want. It's not about things going my way or going easy. It's about your kingdom. It's about you. It's about what you want to do to bring us into relationship with you. So change me. Change my position. Conform me to look more like you. God, when you're ready, send your Holy Spirit that I might be filled with the power and the presence of Almighty God to do what I've been designed to do, to partner with God in bringing His kingdom to earth as it is in heaven. The enemy will lie and tell me I can't and I'm not good enough and a million other things. Help me to wait on you, to be filled with you. Breathe the fresh breath of the Spirit into our lives today, Jesus. And help us to sense the fresh fire of your Holy Spirit that doesn't leave us the way we came in, but changes and transforms and sends us on your mission. In Jesus' name I pray. I want to remind you again of the opportunity to give in worship through your tithes and offerings. Uh, there again are plates available as you exit the sanctuary, and you can go to oakridgewc.com give to give online.
We want to invite you back. Next week, we'll be continuing our refresh series. But of course, before that, we want to invite you out to what I feel is one of the best events in the life of the church family, the opportunity to baptize those who are making a profession of faith. And so we would love to invite you out to San Key State Park to be a part of that wonderful celebration this evening. Go with God and have a great week. God bless.